With the holidays rolling around, I can't help but think back to this time last year when my husband was deployed and I celebrated the bulk of the holiday season on my own. Most of my days were just me and my dog. I work from home and just trying to find that sense of holiday spirit and cheer wherever I could. I think there's actually a lot of joy and beauty to be found in celebrating the holidays alone. And I just wanna give you some practical tips for navigating the season and making the most of it. The holidays can be a really tricky time of year for people. There's such a stereotype and a trope around this time of year that everything is just magical and happy and everyone can overcome their differences and come together. The Christmas movies just aren't realistic. Like life is not a Hallmark movie. It's a lot more complicated than that. Your travel plans were affected and now you have to unexpectedly spend the holidays alone or you have a toxic family situation and are opting to spend them alone or you know, for financial reasons, you can't travel home, whatever it might be. And I think regardless of the circumstances, the core message is still gonna be the same. My first tip for navigating the holidays alone is to look for volunteer opportunities. Last year, I volunteered at two really fun events. The first was a coffin race event in Manitou Springs, Colorado. If you're from the area, you might have heard of it. It's basically a historical kind of Halloween celebration. And I volunteered with a friend and it was really cool to see the event and be part of the behind the scenes of it and just kind of learn more about the history of the area and see all of the supporters come out. And then I also did a trash pickup day at Garden of the Gods in Colorado Springs. Garden of the Gods is beautiful if you've never been. It has these gorgeous rock formations and there are mountains in the background. So what better place to pick up trash for a couple of hours? Especially around the holiday season, there are tons of opportunities to get involved in your local community. I would just take that first step to see what your community needs and how you can help. My second piece of advice is to revisit some of your favorite holiday traditions. Maybe growing up you had a specific Christmas movie that you really like to watch or a specific kind of cookie you like to bake. You know, incorporating those things maybe that you haven't done in years can really bring back that sense of nostalgia and just remind you of happier times. Every fall I make homemade applesauce because I grew up doing that with my mom. I think it can be fun as an adult to kind of look back on those simpler childhood times. Now on the flip side of that, I think it's also very rewarding to create your own new traditions. I just don't think you should feel obligated to do something just because that's how you've always done it or because that's kind of like the usual way to do things. I think it's fun to branch out, try new things. Another activity that really helped me stay positive during the holidays was assembling gift packages and kind of care packages for different people. So since my husband was deployed, I was able to send him care packages and I didn't send him a Christmas themed one, but I did send him a Halloween, a fall and a Thanksgiving one. And putting those together is so fun. It is really nice to put together a physical box of items that reminded you of them, that you think they'll enjoy, maybe our references to little inside jokes or things. I think it just really means a lot to the person you're sending them to. And it's a really fun project, you know, to get hands on and to decorate the box and to go shopping for items. Now, for some people being alone is a really uncomfortable thought. They need the companionship of others. I'm definitely more naturally introverted, so I've always kind of been fine doing things alone and being independent. Regardless if being alone is a scary concept or an exciting concept to you, I think it is important to try to embrace it as much as possible. So instead of seeing it as, oh, I can't do this because my family or my partner isn't here, think about the things you can do that maybe you wouldn't be able to if they were there. So for instance, I love to go to the movie theater alone and my husband would go with me if he was around, but sometimes there are certain movies that he just wasn't interested in. So I would take myself on movie theater dates and I would go out to new restaurants alone. I would go to coffee shops and it can be a really good opportunity to try new things and to challenge yourself to do things alone that maybe you're a little bit nervous to. And of course, 
you know, safety first, keep yourself safe. But I think that you can learn a lot about yourself when you do things alone. A good reminder for celebrating the holidays by yourself is to be gentle with yourself. Those days where you are just feeling down and you don't feel like being social, you don't feel like talking to anybody or doing anything, that's okay. That's totally normal. And I know for myself, I need those days or even just a couple of hours to kind of reset and recharge maybe process through certain things or maybe just zone out and not think about anything too deeply. It can really sometimes be the best thing for you and rest is so important like physically and mentally and emotionally. So don't feel like you have to have something going on every second of the day just to pass the time. And my last tip for spending the holidays alone is to reach out to someone if you are struggling. I'm definitely guilty of trying to do everything myself and kind of keep things internal because I don't want to burden other people with what I'm going through. The way that my counselor has framed it to me when I've told her, you know, oh, well, I don't want to bother them with what I'm going through because I know they have a lot going on. She would kind of flip it and say, but okay, if that person, if your best friend or this family member or whoever came to you asking if you could be there for them, what would your reaction be? And I'm like, oh, well, I would be there for them. I would support them however I could, even if I couldn't, you know, physically be there with them, I would still give them words of encouragement or even just listen to whatever they have to say, even if I don't have advice. And she was kind of like, well, there's your answer. If your family and friends are truly your supporters and there for you, they will say the same thing. Even if it has to be a thing where you schedule a time to talk because you're both busy with work, or kids or whatever it may be, I think that can go a really long way. And I am so thankful for everyone in my life who was there for me and continues to be there for me when I have those really emotional moments or I just need to share, you know, get something off my chest. Um, so I do think it's important to have someone in your life that you can go to and talk about those things with. And that's really all I have for you. I hope that this has been helpful in one way or another. My heart goes out to you because I know how you feel and I know that there are days where it can really suck and you can definitely get in your head about it. And that's totally normal, but I would just encourage you to do your best not to wallow in that and not to let it overcome you and let that be the main focus of your life because it is temporary. If you love the holidays, don't let it dampen your spirit. Just try to find those little pieces of magic and cheer and joy wherever you can. I'm wishing you guys a very happy Thanksgiving, Christmas, whatever you celebrate this time of year. I hope you guys are all doing well and I will talk to you very soon.